so containers are wonderful um, they are really allowing us to get better util utilization on our resources uh, a great example is that uh, we set up an ECS cluster um, Amazon's elastic container cluster uh, container services sorry if you uh, haven't um, uh, been familiar with that uh, you know I'll, I'll add some links in the description so that you can find out a little bit more but basically what this ECS uh, like container like cluster is doing is just being a bucket where we can just put a bunch of containers in and because of that you can get better uh, utilization and uh, it deals with failure and, and it's just overall a better thing a great use case for uh, containers at least for us um, are API's API's uh, normally uh, for us have a very like low volume um, low memory footprint but uh, you want them to be available but you don't want to really have to like over provision API's uh, a lot of API's we run with uh, have like hundreds of calls per minute so it's not like a lot of high, high volume so you don't really you do have some concerns there uh, with um, utilization making sure you have good memory utilization good uh, um, CPU utilization so one thing to do uh, you can you know create a, a set of hosts kind of cluster them together and then put a bunch of containers on them to get better utilization um, so that's that's a, a good fit for us so uh, <clears throat> excuse me I don't really probably know I probably uh, do have this on a graph somewhere of how many containers we're running at any given time or how many instances of, of, a, of containers we have running uh, because we have microservices uh, we still have monoliths that's running in the uh, in containers as well we actually did a little bit of um, uh, divide and conquer with uh, kind of tackling our monolith stack so that's you know what we we've done but the one thing I've learned when I went to uh, DockerCon this year was the fact that the guys from Puppet um, wrote a couple of tools that would actually inspect your container to say like what's really in your container um, I think a lot of times uh, a lot of us that are using uh, containers don't really look at uh, the base images that we're, we're pulling um, I actually like to go from a very minimal approach and then build it up over time where, you know, I'll start with like, if I want to run BusyBox or if I want to run Alpine, I'll start with that. And then I'll make my own Docker file because I want to be uh, sure of what's going in there. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, modify it over time to make sure that my Docker uh, file is actually, you know, efficient. It's not creating additional layers. Uh, you know, just basic housekeeping. But I know a lot of people don't do that. They actually just will uh, grab a, a base image and just start, you know, like a full, like, like CentOS or a full, you know, fill in the blank. <laughs> and, and then they're adding additional packages, which is fine. But it's a lot of stuff that is on that OS that you really don't know. Or it could be vulnerabilities that you're not even thinking about. And the one thing that kind of, uh, you know, uh, I haven't really been able to, like, really think about a good strategy on is really dealing with like updates um, I think it probably may be better to like rebuild your image and get updates but then you still have what do you do about critical um, you know updates or critical uh, exploits that come up or do you kind of let the image update itself which I think is kind of a bad idea but I don't know what do you what do you guys think that'll be interesting to kind of get your take on that when dealing with upgrades do you want to you know just create a new image when you need to upgrade or do you allow the image itself to upgrade I kinda like the first one <laughs> of just building a new image but it'll be interesting to see what you say so please uh, you know give me you know some feedback there so going back to the what the guys um, from puppet were saying is just like really take a look at your your container to just verify what's running uh, because it's a bunch of files but these files become processes and they're running and they're doing stuff you really should be aware of, of what's hap what's happening and, and really I would say ideally just run what you need like you know I guess a great um, thing I like to think about is that like you know your your house can uh, have it has capabilities right you can turn on lights you can turn on heat turn on um, air conditioning um, certain scenarios you just wouldn't want to do you wouldn't want to turn on the AC at the same time as turning on the heat like that just doesn't make sense logically so I would say take that same approach with containers run what you need 
and nothing more. That way you don't have to get a call 2 o'clock at night because something is busted or something is compromised. And it's going to be due to something that somebody else did. And now you have to deal with it. So don't even expose yourself to that. You know, get smaller images. Also, when you do have your images, actually verify what's in those images. Um, they actually uh, talked about kind of, uh, it's one uh, Docker enterprise service that allows you to kind of scan, they scan the images for you, which is, which is pretty cool. Uh, but um, these are some things that you should probably be doing outside of whatever is in that registry. You really should be verifying, you know, to make sure you don't have certain, like, process. make sure the processes that you think should be running are running. Uh, make sure you have certain security features enabled. And, you know, just look at your container. That was, that's the biggest thing I, I would say is the key takeaway. Look at what's running in your container. Um, if I can find the tools, because I did not see the link to the uh, deck uh, or the presentation uh, from this session in DockerCon. But uh, once I find it, I'll go ahead and uh, link it. Uh, it may be a bit, but um, if you have any questions or uh, you have some interesting, hey, this was running in my container story. Um, I would love to hear it. <laughs> um, I really enjoy uh, hearing about Docker. I think by hearing about other people's experiences, you actually learn so much and you don't run into some of the same problems that other people run into. So, uh, you know, thanks for watching. And if you got anything, you know, reach out to me. Thanks. Bye.